Hello, welcome back to my studio. Today we're going to cover a really important aspect of landscape painting. One that you have to get to grips with if you're going to paint exciting and expressive and interesting landscapes. What's that subject? It's all about shadows. Stick around and I'm going to explain why this is so important and how this video is going to help you. Alright, if you've been following my videos for some time or any of my painting courses, you'll know how important shadows are in my landscape paintings. Shadows, of course, give us the light in the painting and that means the shadows help to show up the light and of course we want to paint the light as well. But don't forget, shadows contain light as well. So we've got to take that into account, not just the sun-filled part of the landscape. Now the other day in one of my walks with the dog, I was looking at some shadows falling across the road. And it struck me that everything we need to know about uh, painting shadows and colors and edges and color temperature, all of that was contained in just a few shadows across the road. And I took some photos there and then to illustrate some important parts of painting shadows. So let's have a look at the photos that I took while out on my walk. And here's the, the shadows across the dirt road. And what struck me with these are a couple of things. First of all, you can see the body of the shadow, these darker areas, and then the light filtering through the trees, making these little sunspots even call them sky holes coming through the trees and filtering the light through onto the road and breaking up the shadow. So let's have a look at these light spots and you can notice that they are warmer than the shadow color around it. But when you compare them to the light up ahead, they are much darker and therefore also much cooler because this is a sunny day and shadows are cool and the light spots you'd perhaps think they are as bright and as warm as the the big areas of exposed sunlight but of course they aren't so we've got a difference in the color of the light coming through these small holes through the trees and hitting the the shadow so let's have a look at the color of these light spots I'll just paint that next to the, the picture here. Right, and that's the, the light spot that you're looking at. So I've just taken it from over there and you can see perfect match. Now, if you look at this color on your palette, you may not think that that's a very bright or sunny looking color, but it's a small sky hole in the tree letting a bit of light through and it has to be much darker because very little light is getting through. Of course, up ahead, where all the light is hitting, it's much lighter and warmer. And uh, if you wanted to paint that, it would be perhaps as bright as that, but I would actually make it warmer. You could get a color that's perhaps more like that. That's probably quite an accurate color. That color is probably closest to the true light color up ahead. Okay, now let's have a look at the shadow itself, the, the dark shadow, the coolest part of the shadow. And we'll look here on the, the left hand side. So let's just get an idea of what that color is. That's what it looks like, a sort of a bluish gray, a cool color. And up ahead, on the top right, that's probably different as well. It looks like there's much less light filtering into that area. So let's have a look and put that and you can see much darker and cooler. So those two colors are appearing in the scene. We've got the dark version over there and then the other shadow over here getting more filtered light coming through and then appearing to be a bit lighter and a little bit warmer than the deep dark shadow. 
Okay, so those are the colors and also rel relative color temperatures because color temperature is always relative, one compared to the other. So this light in the road over there is warm compared to the shadow over here, but it's cool compared to the light up ahead over there. All right, so it's all relative. The other important aspect to consider is the edges of the shadow. Now have a look in all of these shadow areas and the, the spots in the road as well, but also between the shadow and the extreme light up ahead. All of these edges are blurred and quite soft. That's because it's filtered light through the tree it's not like a stuck on uh, cardboard cutout or something like that. So you've got to paint these edges a softer, not only a softer edge by dragging the brush around, but it's also a different color. You can actually adjust the color and temperature. So the edge between the extreme light and the shadow is a different color itself. Let's have a quick look at what that would appear. Uh, let's put it down here. So that is the transition color between the shadow and the extreme light. So let's put them all next to each other. All right, so the shadow color, like so. And then the, the light, just an estimation. So there's there's the light and the, there'd be some intermixing there just a little. But that would then be the transition from shadow over there to transition to light. All right, so you can put that in your, your shadow paintings. Now here's one more aspect I want to touch on and that's the concept of local color. And on the left hand side is the shadow over here and on the right is the sunlight as you can see. Now what is local color? In essence local color is the true color of the surface that is not being influenced by any particular light effect. So you'd ask yourself what is the the starting point, the base color of this road and we're probably looking at something like a light yellow ochre. All right, so when you're looking at your palette and you pick a yellow ochre, you say, all right, so I've picked a light yellow ochre and as a value and as a color temperature and all of those things, but mostly it's objective color that would be pretty accurate. So that's your local color. Now, using that as your foundation or your base, you then influence that color through things like color temperature, like adding blue to turn it into a shadow, depending on what it is, how dark the shadow needs to be, and so on. And then you could paint your, your shadow color and transition into that light. And by understanding what the local color is, you know where to start in finding the correct temperature and uh, value. If your shadow is going to become much warmer, you would add warmer colors to that local color and turn it into something else like that. All right, so keep that in mind. Ask yourself what's the local color before you start painting so you know what direction to take your base color. Well, I hope this lesson's given you some ideas that you can put into painting your own landscapes. Shadows are fundamental. Don't ignore them, make the most of them and you'll see your paintings appear much more light-filled and vibrant. Now, if you want to really get into some more landscapes, I've got a free landscape painting course for you. 
It's all about spring scenes and you can find a link in the description next to this video or maybe below if you're on mobile. And there's also a little free course up here as well. So plenty to choose from and plenty to keep you painting happily for some time. Well, don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well. There's always new videos coming along and you don't want to miss those. So hit the notification bell when you do so. Well, until next time, happy painting and cheers for now.